Praise the Lord, my people. Right there. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are so excited about this time. Don't worry about that. This time that the Lord has allowed us to fellowship once again. And we want to ask the lady to have a little greeting. She, she's a part of this. And so I want her to say a few words today with you. We say blessed be to God and the Father for our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. It's so good to be here with you on this Palm Sunday, the day that we celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem as they laid their palms. Today we don't have palms, but we can lay our hearts out and let him walk completely into every aspect of our lives. If you believe as I believe that that is what this time is calling for, just type in amen. Thank you, and it's so good to be here with you. Amen and amen. Let's pray very quickly. I want to pray and get into the word of the Lord. Um, First of all, we want to apologize for this morning. Uh, there's a glitch in our system. We, we have a very sophisticated system that we're trying to work through. We've been working on it all week long, and so we're trying to get through this. So please, man, please, sir, uh, accept our apology. This coming Thursday, we're going to teach on communion, and uh, and hopefully we'll have it up. If not, we'll still go through Facebook. Amen. And uh, we're just excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. Go greet Mark. So we can let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your presence. We pray now, God, as we get into this lesson, that you would allow your spirit to rest upon us. We're just so grateful to be a part of your kingdom. We pray now for those that are seeking sanctuary, that will find refuge in you today. You be magnified, you be glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Saints of God, of course, we are just, again, so thankful for what the Lord is doing and what he's doing for you and for you. Even during a time as this, we still know that God is able. Amen, amen, and amen. We know that God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power, the faith, the belief that lies within us. And so we are still thrilled and just praying for our country, pray for our country, pray for our nation, pray for the world, because the world has been affected by this, this issue that we're dealing with. And I want to deal with this issue, and I know a lot of people are dealing with this issue and so forth, but I want to come from a perspective that God has given me uh, to share with you. And um, I'm praying that you open up your hearts to receive what God would have for you to understand in this season in which we live. And um, please share this message once you... Uh, get the message, and uh, again, you agree with the message, give me some thumbs up, some hearts, and so forth, and allow God's Spirit to work in your heart. Amen. Amen. And listen, this this title of the series is called uh, Crisis, meaning that Christ is still in crisis. He's in crisis. Crisis. Christ is in crisis. And I want to go to the text very quickly, John 16 33. And I want you to understand this particular verse and what Jesus was trying to get the disciples to understand because sometimes we think believers mm, isn't part of challenges. He, he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. We too will go through some stuff. We too will have to deal with some stuff. The difference between believers and non-believers is that we have hope. We have an opportunity to to, to absorb power from on high beyond our capabilities, amen. And so I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna touch in this a little bit, amen, and giving people some time to chime in. I see people still logging in. I don't wanna get started too soon without allowing those that are gonna participate to come on. But in the meantime, let us, let us go into the scriptures and, and hear what the Lord has to say regarding his message. John 16, 33, John 16, 33. He says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. These things that I've spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. 
I want you to know I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I want you to know that in me, there is peace. I need you to say that in Christ, there is peace. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but love, power that produces a sound man. What profits a man to gain this world and lose his mind, you know, lose his soul? What profits a man to have everything and not have peace? But, but if you can have Jesus, you ought to have peace. You ought to have peace. And he's saying here to those that are worried and was complaining about the situation, he said, wait a minute, in the midst of all this, these things I have spoken unto you that in me, in me, in me, ye might have peace. You might, meaning that it's a choice. You can have it or you, you, you don't have it. If you don't know how to cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the things that God said, you won't have peace. But if you know how to yet understand weeping man do it for a night, that my flesh knows that, but my spirit says, hold on, because joy is coming in the morning. And morning time is when you wake up and realize it's just a nightmare. I like that. I like that. So, so he says here, these things I've spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Watch this. In this world ye, have, ye shall have tribulation. In this world, yep, you will experience crisis, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. My God, my God. I don't know how else to say this except that no matter what happens around us or what's happening around us or what's to come, I promise you, believers, we ought to have peace because we're covered by the blood. And, 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 and Jesus said that we ought to have peace because we're in him and he's in us and great is he that's in us than anything that's in the world. Amen. That requires us to do what's necessary to make sure we're covered under the blood and that is uh -oh, stay home. <laughs> oh yeah. We also faith without works is dead. Now we can believe what God can do, but we ought to also govern ourselves to court what's necessary and use common sense to make sure that we fulfill what God said. If we want peace, peace comes in knowing that I'm not hanging around everybody. I'm not touching people. I'm being very cautious and I have peace of mind because I'm not jeopardizing what's necessary to make sure I'm helping and keep my family healthy. Amen. Amen. And amen. So I want to talk to you about Christ in crisis. Christ in crisis. Now, now let me, let me, let me, let me talk to y'all. Okay. I'm going to stay close to my notes. I don't want to go on a tangent because this is very critical because there is a misconception on the term Christ being Jesus' last name. People think Jesus Christ, Jesus is his first name and Christ is his last name. No, Jesus Christ, there's a misconception with this being his last name as opposed to a what theologians call a hypostatic union between humanity and deity, flesh and spirit. I want to teach today, okay? As we celebrate Resurrection Sunday next week, this is uh, 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 this is Palm Sunday, and so we want we want to we want to stay within this. And I also want to make sure that you understand what where God is coming from, because even now, what we're trying to celebrate about Jesus can be can be camouflaged with all of this crisis. But even now, He's still Christ. Okay, so we're talking about this hypostatic union between humanity and deity. Flesh and spirit coming together. Jesus Christ, that is deity and humanity, flesh and spirit joining together. Uh, the philosopher Anselm imposed a Latin theory called cure de homo, which means uh, why God became man. Why God man? Why God became man? Well, after the fall of man, this world was in crisis. Yep, it was in ruins and was in need of a savior that only God could redeem. However, God being a spirit could not circumvent his own principle according to John 3 and 6 that says, uh, that which is born of flesh is flesh. True love, so y'all know about this. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. In other words, for spirit to operate in the earthly realm, it needed a body. So God, being a spirit, 
so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world. He saw his creation being in ruins. He so loved the world, knowing that it needed a savior. He so loved the world that God himself extended himself in flesh in order to redeem the world back to him. What does this mean? That means, y'all, listen to what happened. God himself, God Jehovah, God the Supreme, who sat on his throne and the seraphims and cherubims and, 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 and the angels worshiped him day in and day out, chanting Hosanna. God, this God, saw a need to come to this earth in the flesh to redeem us back to him such that he left his throne. Mm passed down to 42 generations, came to this earth in flesh, Jesus, the incarnate of God, came in flesh, and for 30 years, he prepared himself for the crucifixion. For 30 years, he sat in uh, the temple and, and was, was, was taught and, and, and gained experience for 30 years. And then after 30 years of preparation, he then goes to the Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. And when he was baptized after being prepared, God, oh man, God descended from heaven like a dove. His spirit rests upon Jesus, anointed him for the work. Y'all got to get it. It takes time to be prepared to what God has called you to do. And so Jesus now comes out. God sends this dove as, a, as, a, as, a, as the presence of the Holy Spirit and then says, this is my beloved son, and whom I'm well pleased. In other words, Jesus hadn't done anything yet. He was about to do something, but God knew that what he was about to do, he was going to go through, but he had already equipped him with what's necessary to get through. Oh, yeah, Jesus yeah, at times wanted to throw in the towel, but he understood that no matter what came his way, he was in God and God was in him, and God had already affirmed him before he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. You can't get to where you need to go Unless you go through a wilderness, unless you go through a crisis. But the good news is that God has already affirmed you, confirmed you. But it's up to you to acknowledge the fact that you can get through. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Yeah, you know what? Because grace and mercy and goodness has been following me all the days of my life. So, so here it is, Jesus. Okay, let me calm down. Yeah, let me calm down. So here it is. God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah, he extended himself. Now, theologians refer to this as kenosis. Say that with me. Kenosis. Say that with me. Kenosis. Meaning, God emptied out his spirit, Christos, mm -hmm, a.k.a. Christ. That's where we get the name Christ from, Christos. God's anointing, he had emptied it out into the human body we know as Jesus. That's what happened. God extended himself in the name of Jesus in human flesh through the kenosis process, whereby hypostatic union suggests humanity and deity connects. So Isaiah 9 and 6 puts it together. He says, watch this, y'all, Isaiah 9 and 6. He says, watch this, unto us, watch this, a child is born, flesh. Unto us, watch this, a savior is given, spirit. Uh-oh, you see the two? Isaiah said, unto us, a child, flesh, is born, same verse, unto us, a savior, watch this, is given. Woo! So now you have the connection. So Jesus now becomes Christ Jesus. There's a difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. Same person, but listen to what I'm saying. He becomes Christ Jesus. Watch this. God's anointing working through him. And Jesus Christ, the same God, Jesus allowing God anointing to work through him. Y'all, 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 y that gives me strength. But what can God do through you to fulfill, uh oh, here we go, your purpose? 
God wants to work through you. You are anointed, but can he work through you uh, if you would just allow him? Church, hear me. If you're going to get through what you're going through, you got to allow God to work through you and for you. Some battles don't belong to you. They belong to the Lord. As we deal with this catastrophic time in history, they don't have the answer. But we know Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus Christ is the way. In fact, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We know who's the way. We know who holds the future. And that future is in all of us. And so because we understand where the future lies, it's up to us to make sure we spread the gospel and let somebody else know that there's hope even now in this crisis. Because Jesus understood yeah, his purpose for coming, which was to deal solely with crisis. Y'all understand that? Jesus understood his purpose for coming, and that was to solely deal with crisis. He was born for this. He was born to do this. Before he was born, watch this. God told Satan, yeah, yeah, that's going to come. My, 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 my baby, and you're going to bruise his heel, but ultimately he's going to crush your head. He's going to go through turmoil. He's going to, oh, it's going to look bad, but in the end, he's going to rise with victory. He knew, Jesus knew what he was coming to do. The nation of Israel missed this redemption opportunity. Because when Jesus came, he came in a different way than they expected. They expected their Savior to come with pageantry on a white horse with bells and whistles sounding a trumpet, echoing the angelic voices from heaven, retorting, Hosanna, Hosanna. They expected Jesus to come on chariots. But instead, he was born in a low-down, dirty manger. He was born in a stable. He was born in a place where most kings and priests wouldn't be born. A low, dirty manger, which is the replica of life that we will encounter. Jesus knew automatically he'll be born in crisis. Not just in this world, but watch this, even in your life. Church, my sisters and brothers, ontologically were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Job said a man born of a woman is of a few days. Watch this. And those days are filled with trouble. Listen to me, my sisters and brothers. If you haven't lived, let me say it like this. You haven't lived yet until you've met old man trouble. And if you haven't met him yet, keep on living. Because Jesus said here, watch this, y'all. He said, in this life, in this life, if you're born, you will have tribulations. You will have crisis. But, well, oh, that's the conjunction word. But, that word but meaning, everything I just said is about to be countered with what, with what I'm about to say. I know I just said, in this life, you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer. Woo. Be of good. I'm going to drink to that. He said, yeah, you're going to go through. You're going to have crisis. But be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Somebody said good cheer. Be of good cheer. Why adjective good cheer? Good cheer. Suggest that if there's a good cheer, there's got to be a bad cheer. What is a bad cheer? A bad cheer is when you continue to praise the enemy by complaining about what he's doing, then allowing what he does to affect your life. Bad cheer is when you continue to praise an enemy. Yeah, by complaining about what he's doing and then allowing what he does to impact your life. 
Complaining about tomorrow. Complaining about what you can't do. Complaining about this. Complaining about that. Complaining about this. You're cheering him on. Because he wants to hear you cry. He wants to hear you weep. He wants you to think that there's no hope for tomorrow. And the more you think it and declare it and call friends and feed it, you're cheering him on. And you're cheering on those imps that he's assigned to your life to keep you dormant, to keep you wondering, to keep you thinking that there is no hope. That's bad cheer. Are you with me? So here it is. God is saying, Jesus is saying, yeah, in this life you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Somebody say good cheer. Good cheer. Good cheer. What, what does it mean to have good cheer? This word cheer means courage. Somebody say courage. Courage. Say courage. When Solomon over in 1 Chronicles 28, 20 was faced with a crisis, his daddy David told him, he said, fear not. Fear not. Take courage. In other words, take heart. Take heart. Meaning, watch this, y'all. Manage your emotions when you're faced with crisis. Why? Because out of the heart flows the issues of life. Out of the heart flows your emotions. Every pain that life encompasses, your emotions is attached to it because both are created out of offer or the dust of sin. So whenever you're confronted with an earthly issue, your flesh wants to react to it because it's only natural. But when it does, Jesus said, control your emotions. Take heart, control your emotions in your heart because out of it speaks life or death is in your tongue. So you can't speak stuff in the atmosphere based on what's coming out of your heart. As a man thinketh in his whoo, heart, so is he. Monitor your heart when you're going through, when you're disappointed. Monitor your heart. Everything that comes out of your heart ain't good. That's why you're not to listen or follow your heart, but rather listen to your heart. That's what I meant. Don't follow your heart. Listen to your heart because everything that comes out of it can be based on the emotions that you're feeling at the moment. And you'll make a permanent decision in a temporary moment. Are you listening to me? Be a good cheer. Be a good cheer when you're faced with crisis. In this life, you will have tribulations, but be a, somebody say, good cheer. Take courage. Manage your emotions until I get there because I am on the way. I may not come when you want me, but trust me, I'm on the way. In fact, you can cheer me on in advance. You ain't got to wait until the battle is over because my credit is good. If I did it before, I can do it again. Jesus like, I'm not worried about this crisis that's in the earth. I'm not worried about what happens to America or what's happening to you. Now, this ain't nothing for me. It ain't nothing new to me. Don't you remember back in 9-11 when that catastrophe happened in New York? The builders came trumbling down and it seemed pretty bad. It seemed real bad. But the good news is this. After they cleaned up the rubbish, after they cleaned up the debris, there stood in the midst of all of that mess a 40-foot cross, a beam that others saw as a stabilizer. But we the believers saw it as God said, although it looked bad, I'm still in control. This is my land. And although I allow the enemy to do what he does to get your attention, I'm still in control. And so it is, my sisters and brothers, that we must understand that no matter how bad it looks, Christ is in crisis. And that same Christ lives in you. Yes, he was wounded by transgressions and bruised by iniquity. He carried a chest time out of peace upon his shoulder and with his stripes were healed. He died on the cross, went down the grave, took the sting out of day, rose, took the sting out of death, rose from the grave on the third day that we're going to celebrate next week. He rose with all power, all power in his hand. And that same power now lives in you. He lives in you. He lives in you. Yep, this earthen body 
that's wrapped in crisis. He was born in a manger in order to accommodate your crisis because now he's inside of you. And the same way he came out of the grave, he can come out of you and, 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 and lead and guide you. There's nothing for you. Use the power of God that rests in you. Find that peace. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, you might have peace. Make the decision to have peace, my sisters and brothers. God wants to do something great in you, but it's up to you to allow peace. He wants to wake you up. He wants you to understand that what you're dealing with is just a nightmare. It's not going to take you under. Find your peace in God. Because that same Jesus, yeah, that defeated the enemy, that crushed his head, he's under your feet. You don't have to walk in fear. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to take no thought for tomorrow. How you gonna eat? How you gonna? Uh, how you gonna sleep? Or where you gonna live? Rest in peace, because the God we serve, He was born for this. He's our Father. No good thing will He withhold from us who walk right before Him. Walk in His grace. Walk in His mercy. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you for those of you. Who are seeking sanctuary, who are walking in fear, who are afraid. Some of you are being tested now for the coronavirus or the COVID-19. Some of you are afraid. I've been receiving a few calls from people who are nervous because they've been diagnosed with it. I'm here to tell you, this sickness is not unto death. Sometimes we have to go through situations in order for us to come out with our hands up. Allow this time, this experience to teach you and to show you. Because all of us right now are in a strange land. Places where we've never been before. I've never been secluded in my home before. Neither have you, I don't think. Some of us have never been sick before the way you're sick now. Whatever that pain is, you can't measure pain with pain. But one thing I can say, Christ is in crisis. Oh, yes, he is. The Hebrew boys will tell you that. He went in the fire with us. Joseph said, I was in the pit. And the only reason I got out was because I was able to deal with and, 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 and find myself in a place where I'd never been, but I was able to get out of it because I knew who I was in him. David in the cave of Dulu, Adulu. Yeah, I know who I was, but God came in the midst of the cave. And I declare I will bless the Lord at all time in his praise shall continually be in my mouth. What are you gonna say now that you're dealing with a crisis, which is the norm? What are you gonna say now? I'll tell you what I'm gonna say. If God before me, who can be a grace me? And great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for your people. God, I pray now that your spirit will rest upon all of us as we're dealing with this crisis, understanding that you're in it, but even knowing that God, sometimes it gets the best of us and fear creeps in. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the spirit of worry and I invoke the spirit of peace, joy and happiness. Thank you God for restoration and healing. Thank you for peace that passes our understanding of what we're going through. You be glorified in this, in Jesus' name. If you're here today and you're looking for that peace, you're looking for that joy, you're looking for that hope, I promise you, if you allow God to come in your heart, even though you didn't hear what I preached earlier this day, earlier this morning, I'm gonna preach again on Wednesday. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Let him in. He wants to sup with you. He wants to change you and all it takes for you to accept him by repeating this simple prayer that is Lord Jesus I am a sinner but I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose on the third day and now ascends with the Father I pray 
Holy Spirit, to come into my heart, ignite what's already there, the presence of God. I receive your presence in my life so I can be molded and shaped in what you will have me to be. Thank you, Father, for salvation. I receive it unto myself. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, I want you to hit that, that button on truelovecenter.net. There's a button there called e-member button. I want you to hit that button so our elders can reach out to you and let you know how much we appreciate you taking this opportunity to be a part of the kingdom. If you're looking for a church home, again, we welcome you. True Love Center, we thank you so much for your participation today, for coming on 8 o'clock, even though it was kind of staggered, but you logged on today and this evening, I mean this afternoon, this morning rather. But I want to encourage your hearts, things of God. If this message has been a blessing to you, and if you believe in what God is trying to do in the world, I'm going to ask that you please, sir, please, sir, consider sowing your seed today. We need resources to help us expand the kingdom. Unfortunately, my sisters and brothers, what we're dealing with now is something we call the new norm. We don't know when we're going to go back in our building, but we still got to pay for it. And in the meantime, we have to set ourselves up in this location in my home to make sure that we're able to um, present to you what's necessary in a professional manner that way you're comfortable to hear the word of the Lord. And we want to do some other things so that although we're in our separate sectors that you could participate on another level. But we need to upgrade our systems. We need to upgrade a whole lot. And we also need to do ministry. We still need to give to St. Jude's. We still need to do our education committee. We still need uh, to, to do our outreach. We still need to do things that are related to church. And we need your support. We need your support. And I know in this season, a lot of people aren't working and, and, and so forth. I know, but, but if you're gonna invest in anything at this time, people are going to stock, it's about the first time to buy stock, ah, that's gonna be a minute more. But I would rather invest in the kingdom of God the way I know unequivocally that God will bless me as a result. And God's going to take care of you. This is not propaganda. It's not to say give, that kind of thing, so that you can get. We, we give so that we can get to give. And so we're blessed today. You can give through Giveify. You can give through our cash app, Dollar True Love Center. Or you can just log on to truelovecenter.net and give that way. We'll be so appreciative of what you're doing. Please, ma'am, and please, sir, be fair today. Amen. The Lord has blessed us, and so we want to sow back into the kingdom. Again, give the five cash app. That's dollar sign True Love Center and or truelovecenter.net. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you. And I pray that you log on this coming Thursday, whereby you can hear the teaching of communion fellowship. It is a powerful teaching, and I want you to hear it. A lot of us don't understand what communion is. Should I take it? Should I not take it? I did this. Am I qualified to take it? Should my kids take it? Whatever. We're going to break all this down and what it really means to commune with God. Canonia, what it means to have fellowship with God. Not just on first Sunday, but every single day. We ought to have fellowship with God. And we thank God for all of you. Let's keep each other in prayer. Backing up to my Thursday's message, Murphy's Law. Y'all, if anything bad can happen, it will. And it can get worse if we don't govern ourselves according to Murphy's Law. Governor Murphy's Law. And that is stay home in this season. If you don't have to go out, don't go out. Okay? It's getting worse. And we don't want any of you sick. Amen. The reason why Israel was safe under the blood in the house because they didn't go outside. Reason why Noah's family didn't drown in the flood because they stayed in the ark. Stay home. Amen. And allow God to finish what He's gonna do. And we all gonna come out of this together. Stronger than when we before stronger than we, before we came in. God bless you. You have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. And we'll talk to you on Thursday, but with every single morning from 625 to 645, we're on our prayer line. So you can call that prayer line. I believe 712-432-0075.
Code number is 200959. God bless you. And those of you who have a seed offering and you want to drop out the church, someone will be there between 11 and 1230. You can drop it in the back. Amen. There'll be a box there and they'll be so glad to take your seed. And uh, we thank God for you. Okay. Please make sure you share this message and be a blessing to somebody. God bless you. You have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon.